Hey guys, in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to create this Bloom video effect in just a few simple steps inside Premiere Pro. So let's get started. All right, as you can see on the timeline, I have got a stock footage. You can use any footage that you like. First of all, we have to create a new adjustment layer inside the project panel. Here, we have to accept the same settings as the sequence. Next, click on OK. Now we can drag this adjustment layer from the project panel over to the timeline and place it on top of the video clip. And then, let's move over to the effects panel to apply a brightness and contrast effect. Now let's drag and drop the brightness and contrast effect onto the adjustment layer. After that, we have to apply another effect. This is a directional blur effect. Next we have to apply a Lumetri color effect. Let's drag and drop the effect onto the adjustment layer. And lastly, let's apply another effect. This is a lens distortion effect. Let's drag and drop the effect onto the adjustment layer. After that, move over to the effect controls panel to customize all the effects. Firstly, find the opacity section and then click on the blend mode drop down menu and select the soft light mode from the list. Next, we have to customize the brightness and contrast effect. Firstly, make sure the time indicator at the beginning of the adjustment layer. And then let's click on the stopwatch icon for the brightness and the contrast parameter. After that, we have to make the brightness parameter value around 25. And then let's make the contrast parameter value around five. After that, we have to move the time indicator 10 frames forward. Next, we have to make the brightness and the contrast parameter value around zero by clicking on this reset icon. Now let's select all the keyframes and right click on it. Then we have to select Auto Bezier. Again, we have to move the time indicator 10 frames forward. And then let's copy these keyframes and we have to paste them here. Again, we have to move the time indicator 10 frames forward. After that, let's paste the keyframes again. We have to do the same thing to the whole adjustment layer. In the next step, we have to customize the directional blur effect. Now, let's make the direction parameter value around 143 degrees. After that, let's customize the Lumetri color effect. Firstly, let's open the drop down menu of the basic correction parameter. From the basic correction parameter, we have to make the exposure property value around negative two. And then let's open the drop down menu of the creative panel. Here we have to make the vibrance property value around 100. Next, we have to make the saturation property value around 200. Let's open the drop down menu of the vignette panel. Here we can make the amount of the vignette value around negative 2.1. And let's make the midpoint value around 38. We can keep all parameters of the Lumetri color panel hidden for convenience of work. In the last step, let's customize the lens distortion effect here we have to make the curvature parameter value around negative 15. All right, now we are done. Now you can see the changes on the program monitor. Let's move over to the project panel and then we have to drag and drop the adjustment layer into the timeline. Next, let's move over to the effects panel to apply a lens distortion effect. After that, we have to apply another effect. This is an invert effect. Let's drag and drop the invert effect two times. Next, we have to apply a Lumetri color effect. Let's drag and drop the effect onto the adjustment layer. Now, go over to the effect controls panel to customize all the effects. Firstly, let's find the opacity section and then click on the blend mode drop down menu and select the linear dodge mode from the list. Now, we have to customize the lens distortion effect. Firstly, we have to create an ellipse mask by clicking on this icon. Next, let's customize the ellipse mask to something like this. Please note this step is important. Do the same thing as I am showing here. All right, let's make the mask feather value around 555. And then we have to enable the inverted property by clicking on this box. After that, we have to make the curvature parameter value around negative 58. All right, now you can see the changes on the program monitor. Next, in the top invert effect, we have to select the blue from the channel parameter. After that, let's make the blend with the original parameter value around 60%. And then in the bottom invert effect, we have to select the saturation from the channel parameter. After that, let's make the blend with original parameter value around 60%. And lastly, let's customize the Lumetri color effect. Let's open the drop down menu of the basic correction parameter. Now we have to make the exposure property value around negative three. And then we have to make the highlights property value around 100. After that, let's make the whites property value around 100. And lastly, let's open the drop down menu of the vignette panel. Here, we can make the amount of the vignette value around negative 0.8. And let's make the midpoint value around 26.6. After that, let's make the feather value around 100. All right, now you can see the changes on the program monitor. 
Again, let's move over to the project panel, and then we have to drag and drop the adjustment layer into the timeline. Now go over to the effects panel to apply a Lumetri color effect. Next, we have to apply another lens distortion effect. Let's drag and drop the effect onto the adjustment layer. Let's move over to the effect controls panel to customize all the applied effects. Firstly, find the opacity section and then click on the blend mode drop down menu and select the linear dodge mode from the list. Now in the opacity panel, we have to create an ellipse mask by clicking on this icon. Next, let's customize the ellipse mask to something like this. Please note this step is important. Do the same thing as I am showing here. All right, let's make the mask feather value around 637. And then we have to enable the inverted property by clicking on this box. After that, let's customize the Lumetri color effect. Let's open the drop down menu of the basic correction parameter. Now we have to make the exposure property value around negative six. And then from the lens distortion effect, let's make the curvature parameter value around negative nine. In the next step, again, let's move over to the project panel, and then we have to drag and drop the adjustment layer to the timeline. Now go over to the effects panel to apply an invert effect. Let's drag and drop the invert effect onto the adjustment layer two times. Let's move over to the effect controls panel to customize all the applied effect. Firstly, find the opacity section and then click on the blend mode drop down menu and select the screen mode from the list. Now in the opacity panel, we have to create an ellipse mask by clicking on this icon. Next, let's customize the ellipse mask to something like this. Please note this step is important. Do the same thing as I am showing here. All right, let's make the mask feather value around 682. After that, let's make the mask expansion value around 162. Next, in the top invert effect, we have to select in phase chrominance from the channel parameter. After that, let's make the blend with original parameter value around 60%. And then, in the bottom invert effect, we have to select the quadrature chrominance from the channel parameter. After that, let's make the blend with original parameter value around 30 to 60%. All right, now we are done. Now you can see on the program monitor, the bloom effect creation is complete. By following these steps and incorporating the optional enhancements, you can create a dynamic bloom video effect inside Premiere Pro that will elevate your video editing projects. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like the video and leave a comment.